back to my YouTube channel, Elliot Wave Principal. I'm your host, Shaheen. In today's video, we have a lot, a lot to discuss. First of all, uh, we'll discuss the stocks, this crypto, and oil. We'll look at oil, and we're going to discuss all the indices right over here. That includes NASDAQ 100, Dow Jones, S&P 500, 500, FTSE, Nifty, DAX, all these indexes. After we have done that, we'll look at it crude oil and then after discuss that we discuss gold and silver and we look at Bitcoin and Ethereum after we have done that we'll switch over to the Forex section which is right over here within Forex section we have Euro in front of us we have British pound that we will discuss Canadian dollar will be discussed uh, US dollar index uh, we'll discuss that and we'll discuss Japanese gen so let me change the order so we'll discuss okay there it is so we'll discuss Japanese yen after that we'll discuss the US dollar itself and what else is there that we have here if some of you guys are interested in miners or gold and silver I'll try to uh, put that in the last section okay so we have a lot to discuss first we'll discuss the indices and stocks uh, and then we'll discuss the forex market in the end we'll discuss uh, gold miners I'll discuss gold and silver within the previous uh, this watch list and then we'll discuss the miners in the last section of it we have quite a bit of it let's so let's start let's start with our first watch list which is right over here uh, stocks crypto and oil before we head on to actually yeah we'll, we'll take a time let's have a look at nasdaq 100 and see how things are going uh, i think just just a week ago when i uh, posted that there was a possibility that we are going to be bearish a lot of people um, not a lot of people a couple of people you need to understand market moves in a in a wave structure and at that point what happened now we already turned negative all right so all the people who were yelling at me that okay i was wrong what's happening right now we have already seen a pullback and probably you are feeling that okay yeah probably this is coming on the trend line and then we have started yes we have started the pullback we have started to decline and this pullback uh, within the uh, the bearish uh, move was a major major chance and it still is a chance still there are stocks are still trading much better as uh, right over here as compared to right over here so this is still a chance to sell but I think that this is gonna accelerate now so I believe that we have created the smaller degree uh, in the top right over here now we are expecting a major major run downward and that downward trend can actually take us further down right now I'm not providing any target for that run, that run downward but one thing is very very clear and that is we are bearish from over here so I would turn bearish on uh, Nasdaq let me turn this on where is everything right over here okay so here's our labeling first of all we can consider this as simply as wave one and two can we consider this as wave three right over here and this whole as wave four this can be considered as wave four as that would mean that we are seeing probably something similar uh, within the previous five wave structure that would mean we have completed one two three four and we are going for fifth wave the analysis that I'm telling you guys that I'm bearish is not based on Elliott wave analysis is based on WD GAN analysis that I am uh, doing on my own side as well but we can also implement Elliott wave analysis as uh, because more and more people are aware with Elliott wave analysis so we can consider this as wave four structure we can definitely consider this as wave four right over here and wave 3 can be pushed back right over here we can consider this as wave 3 right over here okay in this regard we have wave 1 and wave 2 we can call this as wave 3 and a b and c structure and then we are expecting for the prices to go downward creating a fifth wave okay let's see if we can find a trend line that's actually connecting these trend points and uh, does not seem likely but we'll still have a look at it okay so it's closed by it's not hitting the point right over here but it's closed by uh, or if we use this trend line and then we can actually use this trend line and we can see that right now the price actually went beyond the trend line sitting on top of it and now I'm expecting it will go pull back it will actually fall through it if you want to wait you can definitely wait for this uh, support to be broken but I think we have seen a top right now for Nasdaq 100 and we are expecting to be bearish in a few weeks to come the bottom is expected to be in somewhere in the middle of I would say August right here August September October so later part of 
we have 20th of uh, August today and the top has already started so we are expecting a bottom to be formed around 20th of October so bottom is expected to be formed around 20th of October in Nasdaq 100 and at this point on a daily time frame I'm bearish let's have a look at Dow Jones 100 and Dow Jones is I believe that we have seen the top as well right over here uh, we'll discuss the labeling later on a major swing on the downward is expected and the bottom is around the same which is uh, 20th of October right now we are expecting a lot quite a bit of stronger move downward and we are expected to see a new bottom being formed whether that new bottom will be forming right over here we can f expect it to further down that depends on the data later on that comes in the market but we are definitely seeing a bearish move right from the top right over here S&P uh, is same we have already created a top right over here if you guys are interested you want to definitely look for uh, wait for uh, the break of the trend line that's actually holding the price movement upward let's have a look at an hourly time frame and you can do a similar behavior a similar uh, thing with the other indices as well okay that means we have to adjust our labeling right now okay so right over here we have two points right now and we can see that we have already kind of dropped below that point and that has been retested as well on a smaller time frame oh that's pretty good there it is so we have dropped below the trend line and we have retested it so we have seen a top right over here we have a one and two three and we can call it as wave four right over here at this point and this is our wave five right over here and this is our wave C that means that we've we were not able to we weren't able to complete the target I have done while I was posting uh, the targets of it I was going through uh, WDGAN research and I found um, a method that Gan used himself probably to find targets and Gan often talks about two resistance points one is major resistance and one is minor resistance and in these videos um, I realized what major is and why he was used to count major by major he meant the prices won't be going beyond that point by major resistance he meant the prices were not expected to go beyond that point it was not necessarily the target point so for target point I have another research that we have to follow and this is the mistake that we have made I have made in the analysis section uh, I, I didn't know at that point but right now that was our major uh, major uh, you can case say target so if you want to be bearish is advisable to keep your target beyond this point right over here instead of being this point and this similar goes for Nasdaq 100 because I gave you guys a target a price target for Nasdaq 100 we did not uh, which we did not actually r receive right over here so if you want to be bearish I think it will be much better if we can actually keep our stop loss beyond the the previous target that I gave you guys instead of keeping on this one and similar goes for Dow Jones as well I gave you guys the target we were way away from target right over here uh, in this area and if you want to be more sure then that there is a possibility that we have not completed this one right in that case you might want to put your stop loss beyond this point which was the calculated target for the previous move and this target which became as a resistance point or a, we became a turning point this is the minor resistance and the target and minor resistance uh, they are there is a possibility that the target can actually come on the minor resistance so we'll discuss more in the future if you guys are interested in GAN then and at least you can pick one thing major resistance is calculated in a different way and minor resistance is calculated in a different way uh, if you are whenever you are doing your research keep that in mind that major and minor resistance are calculated differently FTSE index so let's see what's happening on the FTSE index we did see the price moving upwards since now we can see that most of the indices are actually not completing the on the target right over here it is better to wait for the horizontal line to be uh, broken right over here for FTSE because we, if we are not seeing the target in that case we can definitely use this one and if you want to be short right over here you definitely want to keep your stop loss beyond the target price calculated for FTSE major resistance point calculated for FTSE let's have a look uh, and once again what's happening right here is happening right there I'm bearish on FTSE and we are expected to see a major uh, 
give me a moment let me see is it expected to see a major swing downwards in FTSE and if you want to be bearish and the I am bearish you want to put your stop loss beyond that point which is the calculated price from the last swing let's have us look at how nifty is doing uh, I'm also turning bearish on nifty we were very close to the target point and we were very close to the target point right over here too so in that case we can definitely use this area and this is a very beautiful trade in uh, in in terms of being close to the point right here target point here and we should turn bearish i'm expecting a major swing downward in nifty 50 as well dax as well dax is one of the indices that's actually has already broken the trend line and you are expecting the for it to go right over here so we can see that the major major truncation has happened even at our target point it was a truncation but we can see that it has fallen way below some of you guys who are electricians are going to have trouble with it that we are going to so far away from the double top and we cannot expect to be uh, this a uh, whole structure in simple words don't don't want to consider don't don't consider it as a flat correction you don't have to so you can consider it as wave in an impulsive wave and a corrective wave right completed over here an impulsive wave and a corrective wave the major concern here is that are we bullish at here at this point or are we bearish let's have a look on the hourly time frame and you will get your uh, you'll get the answer auto right over here let me delete that so we can actually redraw it we can see we have two trend lines this one is the inner trend line and the inner trend line is broken okay and then we have an outer trend line which is actually connecting these two points right over here and we can too see that both one is connect they're both uh, broken right over this point so if you want to you want to wait for the break of 13,445 that's on horizontal support I'm expecting right now that we will turn bearish at this point. Let's have a look on the daily time frame to see how strong the day was itself. So pretty good. Last three days have been uh, bearish and we already have seen some gap in the market as well. So I'm expecting this behavior to continue. I'm bearish on DAX as well and I'm expecting uh, that a bottom will be for uh, actually the bottom for FTSE and DAX is different but we can estimate for now is to be around two months away for DAX as well crude oil what's happening crude oil uh, it has not behaved let's have a look that trend line seems really positive that we have seen right over here so far we have one connecting points two connecting points three connecting points and four connecting points let's have a look what's happening on an hourly time frame okay In my last video, we were using this trend line to consider that there may be a top right over here. Instead, we have gone much deeper. So I'm right now considering it is an A, a B, and this hole as a C, which is a 5 wave structure, and kind of an ending diagonal I'm considering right now at this point. This has to be wave 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5. So an A, a B, and a C. I'm considering it right now, and the prices has kind of seen a nice a reflection of the trend line so we can still be sure that we can uh, consider this as wave one and this as wave two and I think I'm gonna go with this one right now still uh, nothing has changed with that one only the position of two has changed I'm bearish on crude oil and I'm expecting that we are gonna go towards around fifty five dollars uh, per barrel so we're gonna turn negative in uh, because the stock market is gonna fall in, and if the stock market is falling then crude oil normally falls with it so we are expecting that we are to be bearish in few next few days to come I would say next maybe weeks to come so I'm still bearish and I'm expecting this to be continuing this is the labeling and nothing more has changed we have uh, wave 4 is complete and we are still now going through wave 5 this red, red wave 5 that would turn into be wave 3 okay so we have a major major swing to complete right over here we have green complete and green two complete right now we are going through green three right over here within th third third greens right over here we have completed one and two we are very close to the completion of two or we have already completed it and then you have to be bearish in that uh, labeling if you guys are interested I can show you guys 
two hours chart and here is the complete labeling if you guys are interested in seeing the labeling okay let's have a look at gold and silver so in my previous analysis videos I told you guys that there is a possibility that we have created the top and then we have created the top with gold and silver I came up with an analysis that there was a possibility that we have not created the top in um, British pound and euro and Canadian dollar and we are to expect a bullish move I'm afraid that analysis has not worked out right so right now we have analysis in gold and silver let me turn that to auto so we can actually more and more people can actually see it and right now I'm expecting this to be on the bearish side some noise I'm expecting there's going to be quite a bit of noise in this region um, and I'm going to leave gold alone for a while right now I am bearish on the larger swing nothing has changed in that regard let me go on a, on a daily time frame to so, show what you are expecting in gold and silver so this is the in next few weeks to come this is what I'm expecting in gold and silver right over here let me um, okay so right now here we are and we are expecting for the price of gold to drop all the way back to close to fourteen hundred dollars all right so I'm expecting the price of gold to drop back to close to fourteen hundred dollar in a <coughs> in a larger wave downward how that wave is going to play out that's another question the potential target time target for gold is around the same when uh, we are going to see a bottom in stocks with gold one I am more sure I've done some analysis and it looks like that we are going to see a bottom being formed around 20th of October so with gold and silver I'm expecting a bottom to be formed around 20th of October there is a possibility because we are getting closer to the end part of the the last part of the the wave there is a possibility that we can actually reach that target beforehand if we reach the target beforehand I'm not expecting for the prices to drop below 1400 so our major resistance point is going to be around 1400 US dollars we can definitely see something above that but I'm expecting that we won't, we won't be crossing uh, the price of gold behind 1400 dollars an ounce and next weeks are going to be all bearish here here starts another problem right now if I'm the next question you are probably asking if that if this is the top and we are expecting for the prices to drop all the way below what is the route that we are going to take are we going to come all the way right over here or we are going to come down and go up and come down and go up and come down and go up because this is the uh, the main reason that get can developed his tool for angles and that is the reason I have drawn angles on it so we can actually see what's happening where the different support and resistance forces are coming handy so let's try to answer that question by using WD GAN angles uh, so that our target is let's say at fourteen hundred dollar around and we're looking at the end date around 20th of October so we draw a, s a starting point we have a starting point right over here for the price and time and we have an end time for the uh, time and uh, price as well so what we do we do we try to do uh, a box a WD GAN box with it let's have a go look at a four hourly time frame maybe we can actually see let me increase that to auto let me increase the size of it so this circular curve is kind of giving us a rough estimate I've just drawn it not a particular method just a starting point and an end point and I am expecting that there is going to be some noise in this region right over here let's have a look at the angles that I have drawn I have drawn the angles on a hourly time frame and we can do auto right over here too these angles are okay as you guys can see that this angle this is um, the 45 degree angle would be passing right through the first box right over here this will be our 45 degree angle and this 
the other angle which is one by one and this angle is basically a division between the angle that would go through right over here and that would go through right over here so this is a division between two angles similarly I've seen that this is also a division between this angle that will pass through this angle and itself and an upper angle actually right over here so this is a division this angle is a division that actually passes through this angle and right over here let me sh draw you guys and actually instead of confusing you guys let me see if you can actually uh, let me turn that to blue okay this is fine so this is our 45 degree angle as you guys can see that right now we are sitting on top of 45 degree angle and therefore and the 45 degree angle also got a hit right over here and this a little bit hit a, as well here right now in short we'll discuss the angles later on if you guys want to discuss it in short I found that these in between angles are working much better than over here we have seen that prices dropped below it they find a support and they kind of ran away right over here and then once again they found a support and then they ran away over here I have um, I cannot explain the reason I have a reason that uh, I'm expecting that the prices are going to go up and retest this line this is the most recent support that support would become actually the support for the the correction and then I'm going to wait for the correction to complete I'm expecting that we are going to see quite a bit of noise right over here before we actually go down right over here so I'm going to wait that out as far as the the generic outlook or weekly outlook is concerned I'm bearish on gold and I'm bearish on silver uh, but on a uh, for just for the purpose of trading that the way I am trading uh, using the pullbacks in that case I'm gonna wait for uh, I'm gonna wait for a pullback even though if it does not happen let's say if it runs away then it's all right I'm gonna wait for the pullback we are as I told you guys that we are expecting for the gold to drop around 1400 ish and I'm not expecting for the gold to drop below $1400 per ounce we have done um, a silver as well we can see that silver has broken as well we have seen the broken uh, trend line that we drew from over here silver has gone uh, more bearish as compared to gold right now we can see and then I'm gonna wait for the pullback to happen as well uh, let's have a look on the daily time frame to give you guys an idea where exactly I'm looking for silver to be silver is expected to go somewhere around 1260 1175 1260 and I will redo the calculations right over here this is we are expecting a larger larger move in the price of silver so you guys can expect what's happening and I have told you guys that once we are in that target a massive massive price uh, sharp reversal is expected to happen right over here so, so we're expecting a sharper very sharp reversal once we hit that target area we'll discuss that reversal later once again I'm bearish on silver I'm bearish on gold on my own I'll wait for a pullback to happen if that pullback does not happen that's all right that's the, the that's the way trading is I'm gonna let it go right downward I'm not going to try to catch right over here and wait it to come down and then be in some sort of loss right over here let's have a look at Bitcoin oh Bitcoin has dropped already quite a bit this was yesterday as you guys can see now that we have broken the major support right over here and the strength of the bar is also indicating that we are definitely not making 30,000 all right the structure that actually started from over here is complete right now so you want to call it W X and Y and X and Z that's up to you it looks to me that we are looking at it in the same way if you want to call it in a different way you guys can call it double W and X and this whole be considered as Y when we can consider this as a triangle right over here and uh, or you guys can want to consider this as a 5 year structure 3 structure and 5 year structure so this can be considered the W and X and Y as itself one thing is clear that we are not reaching the target that we thought we were reaching in this case we can bring that wave 4 right over here at this point and we are clearly clearly bearish on uh, cryptocurrency 
and this goes for Ethereum this goes for uh, Solana as well we are definitely waiting for uh, crypto uh, Bitcoin to go somewhere around 10k this seems a very solid possibility with markets being such ready for a nose down um, there it looks very obvious that we are looking for Bitcoin to be way deeper uh, again once again I'll see if I can find the a way to find the uh, potential target for a cryptocurrency because I have noted in cryptocurrency that it forms uh, a top beforehand especially for the time is concerned that would top uh, make a top beforehand uh, before even the time reaches so we'll, I'll see if I can find a way to, to calculate the target and I'll try to give the target away uh, in my oncoming videos we have a similar analysis for Ethereum I'm bearish on Ethereum right now as you guys can see that we kind of we were not a much away from the target which is twenty four hundred dollar that I gave you guys and then right over here right we went around two thousand uh, dollar right now we are bearish at Ethereum I have a confirmed bias on cryptocurrency that we are bearish now we are not meeting the target and we are bearish on cryptocurrency all sorts of crypto cryptocurrency that is included let's uh, that completes our one watch list let's uh, go ahead on Forex Euro <coughs> I noted that there were com a couple of comments on the in the comment section. I myself had a couple of trades in British pound and in euro. They did not play out good. I had some profits when it went uh, up. I did not take profit while expecting for the prices to go up. Once again, I did a classic mistake. I did not know at that time that that was a major resistance to be considered. The, the processes that I used, uh, uh, the different squares that can talk about, the different tools that he talks about that end up calculating the major resistance and uh, the minor resistance research is done someone recently by another uh, technical analyst and uh, maybe I would mention his name later but the minor resistance research is done by actually another guy and uh, I have to probably learn that in order to calculate the minor resistances right over here but right now we can see that within that structure let's say that this is uh, let's say that this was the top or this was the top whatever the case right now I'm considering that this structure that I complete actually started from over here is complete either over here or over here we have seen an impulsive move downward and a correction and we have seen the prices move kind of, of a similar length right over here so let me have a look if we can see that they are of equal length at this point So as you guys can see there is a possibility that we are waiting for a pullback first there is a possibility that, that the, the price is expected to hit kind of an equivalency right over here there is a good possibility for it and then we have to expect a pullback right over here so I'm gonna wait for the pull pullback to happen before I join the trend what does that mean that simply means that we have completed a top right over here we have completed a top right over here a smaller impulsive corrective we are waiting for the this to be completed and we are waiting for the uh, for the correction to come back in hand and when that happens I will join the trend on the downside at this point I had a couple of uh, very interesting um, comment section that how is gonna happen and then see what happened in the last three four days a lot of people were talking that okay this was a major bottom in um, in gold and in uh, Forex has bottom, bottom out as well all right so no euro is going further down British pound is definitely going further down we are seeing uh, bearish side on gold as well gold has dropped around fifty dollars silver has dropped around two dollars an ounce so we are further bearish on it US dollar is getting stronger and stronger right now we are expecting for uh, this to be wave one and two a smaller impulsive and a correction and an imp other impulsive go down going down that word and some sort of correction and then going downward that again that shall do for the next week as well so once again I'll repeat that we have an impulsive correction an impulsive and correction another move downward we will see some sort of correction like that way it can definitely correction pull that way and then you will expect for the prices to go down right over here let me see if I can find a tool
the only thing is that this is supposed to be finishing somewhere around over here and then we shall see some sort of correction and then we'll see some impulsive a larger degree of correction another move downward this is what you're expecting in British pound right now I mean this is euro sorry I completely messing wrong this is euro a similar structure is going on in British pound that's why I probably maxed it up the reverse head and shoulder pattern as you guys can see did not work no it did not work let me have a look So we have an impulsive, a correction, we have an impulsive move and a correction is expected and then we'll expect another further move downward, a larger correction and move downward. Similar pattern as we are expecting in, in Joro. So I think I'm, I'm personally going to wait for, uh, to wait this impulse section play out and wait for a pullback and at that point I will turn the, join the trend as well. Canadian dollar once again, we see that the prices have not played out the way we were expecting it to be so we have seen an impulsive a correction an impulsive is yet not complete and we'll wait for the correction to join in and then another price movement upward a larger correction on the side and then another larger price movement upward this is the analysis for uh, Canadian dollar next week Japanese Gen is going to uh, get closer to <coughs> what I believe is in gold that I'm expecting some sort of more noise right over here uh, reason is because we can, can see from the correction we have seen much deeper correction in uh, Japanese Gen if you look at it British Pound we have not seen that much of a deeper correction within uh, the structure right over here and if you look at Euro it, it gives a much better clue that you can see that we have seen a larger move downward and the correction was not that deep as compared to Japanese Gen. So we have seen much deeper price action in, in within the correction. We have seen an impulsive wave and a correction and let's say this is an impulsive in that case we are going to see a lot of noise and if this is not this is part of the correction we are still going to see a lot of noise right over here. So be ready to see the noise happening in Japanese Gen and, and then we have seen that gold also is doing uh, we saw an initial price movement downward and we have seen very deep price action in gold as well so I'm expecting that although we have seen gold move down I'm expecting that some sort of noisy correction is expected to happen in gold silver and Japanese gen and some shallower expect correction is expected in euro British pound and in Canadian dollar US dollar itself we can see that we have seen very shallow correction from US dollar itself right over here so we have seen an impulsive a correction and whenever this is this part of the wave impulsive wave is complete we're gonna see a shallow correction and then move upward and then a larger correction and a sharper move upward something like wave 3 structure is expected in that regard so this completes the forex section I have already uh, spoken to too much let's have a look quick look on miners and see what's happening we've already discussed gold and silver let's have a look at DAX uh, I mean uh, what's that one is GDX this is GDX right gold miners e ETF VANEC ETF PLC VANEC gold miners I think this is GDX itself oh this is GDX right over here you can see from over here we can see that it's already heading sharply down to the, the row area right over here the low that was formed in gold and silver and we can see that uh, the G GDX itself has dropped quite a bit so what's our target for GDX right over here we are expecting GDX to be very very bearish but meanwhile it is going to present us a historical time to buy right over here this is the moment when you buy wanna buy gold and silver and GDX or miners right over here so you're expecting 
a sharper move downward some and once again I'm expecting some sort of noise it may not happen in minors right over here this is what I'm expecting in GDX we're expecting GDX to go all the way back to 1640 right over here this target has to be taken lightly I'll have to run some uh, processes in finding the target but we are definitely move, expecting a sharper move in GDX Newmont Corporation is similar I think Newmont has already created a new bottom right over here there it is we have already seen a new bottom formed in Newmont and prices have dropped quite a bit already even gold and silver has not dropped uh, created a new low that can tell you how much weakness we have in Newmont but that weakness is result of people panicking or the large organizations panicking I'm expecting that once new mount is expected to create a bottom in couple of months time somewhere around $25 that will be the historic moment to buy new mount and then we can see a sharp reversal in uh, GDX in gold and silver in new mount in other miners as well Metalla is not expected to be as strong after it has completed uh, as we have yet to gain probably create a double top in Newmont Natella is Metella is expected to create a top right around this region I'm still bearish on Metella nothing has changed in that regard we can see that we have already seen a new bottom this is actually telling me one thing and there's a stronger possibility that we are gonna see a lot of noise being formed in this region right over here All we're gonna see a lot of noise in this region when the, as soon as the price hits the target we're gonna see quite a bit of noise after that Wheaton Metals Precious uh, precious Metals here's the analysis for Wheaton Precious Metals in front of you guys we're expecting for Wheaton to go down all the way in this region and uh, you have price targets available with you wish you good luck with your trading and once again we messed up on silver uh, not on silver we messed up on Joro and we messed up on British Pound and uh, let's see how things goes next week. Wish you good luck with your trading. Have a good one and bye-bye.